Hello FPL managers and welcome to our game week 13 preview. Let's start with transfers in and transfers out. Trent Alexander-Arnold with a fixture at home to Southampton in game week 13 and his next 5 fixtures rated 3 or below, he's definitely one player to bring in. James with two of his next four games FDR rated 4, he's an asset to get in with his high potential of getting attacking returns. Gallagher, his stats are impressive for a 6 mil midfielder, he's one of the best budget midfielders to get. Smith Rowe, impressive in the last few weeks, with two of his next five games FDR rated 4, there are better options to bring in. Cancelo, one of the best fullbacks in the world right now, he has potential for goals, assists and clean sheets. Transfers out. Antonio. He has blank in his last 3 matches and faces City, Chelsea and Arsenal in the next 5 games, he doesn't seem as a player who can bring many points right now. Ben Rama, with a single attacking return in his last 7 game weeks, it's time to sell for me. Ronaldo, I think he's still worth holding on to as United fixtures become favorable after game week 13. Diash, it will be better to upgrade him to Cancelo for a higher point roof. Vardy, he's a proven goal scorer despite recent disappointments and Leicester have nice fixtures ahead with 3 of his next 4 games FDR rated 2. His owners can definitely hold on to him and pray for a Vardy party. Players vs Team Stats Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang has been involved in 9 goals in his 8 appearances for Arsenal against Newcastle in all competitions. He has scored 6 goals and produced 3 assists, finding the net in each of his last 5 matches against the Magpies. Neil Maupay has scored 4 goals in his 6 league matches against Leeds, more than he has netted against any other side in English league football. Harry Kane has either scored or assisted in each of his last 6 Premier League matches against Burnley, 7 goals and 3 assists, having scored just once in his first 4 top flight appearances against the Clarets. Jamie Vardy has scored in each of his last 3 Premier League home matches against Watford, with all 3 of these strikes coming from the penalty spot. In all competitions, Cristiano Ronaldo has scored just one goal in 15 appearances against Chelsea, doing so in the 2008 Champions League final. The Blues are the side he has faced the most in the league football, 10 matches without scoring. Now let's have a look at clean sheets odds. With a strong template beginning to form around Chelsea, Liverpool and Man City in defense, let's take a closer look at their chances of shutting out their opponents in game week 13. Liverpool have a 46% chance of keeping a Southampton attack at bay. Liverpool have one clean sheet in their three recent home games, but their game week 12 performance against a resurgent Arsenal proves they are back from their slumber. Southampton, on the other hand, has scored only six times on the road. This proves that against Liverpool's solid defense, odds will be heavily stacked against them to score. Man City have a 45% chance of keeping clean sheet on a home match against a high-flying West Ham United. Alongside Chelsea, Man City has kept eight clean sheets this season, six of those were at home. So this proves that the Hammers have faint hopes of scoring this week. Chelsea's chances of not conceding against Manchester United are at 42%. As mentioned earlier, Chelsea have kept 8 clean sheets, so it's hard to score against them even if the opponent is Manchester United. Finally, Arsenal's improved form was put into test last game week at Liverpool, but odds of a clean sheet against Newcastle are at better this week at 41%. In their last two home games, Arsenal conceded one goal. In all their away matches, Newcastle scored just 5. Top 5 Stats Salah stays in the top 5 in all attacking stats for the last month, he is the most consistent player since the start of the season, blanking only once. Chris James brought more FPL points in the last 4 game weeks, in addition he has created 12 chances and made 14 shots in that period. Alexander Arnold was on fire in the last month, providing 38 points, 12 chances created and 2.48 expected assists, justifying his price tag. Gallagher and Benteke seem as the key attacking players for Palace. The Belgian is close to the top in all shooting stats and XG, while Gallagher has most chances created and 1.46 expected assists in the last 4 weeks. Watford scored 9 goals in 2 games and 0 in another 2, so their attack is quite unpredictable. King and Dennis are building up their good stacks meanwhile. Fixtures focus, this week we talk about Leicester. The next 4 games, Leicester have appealing fixtures, Watford, Southampton, Aston Villa and Newcastle. All 4 are placed lower in the league than Leicester and 3 of them are in the bottom 4 at XG. Worth noticing is that the same trio have all changed managers recently and all opponents won their latest game, except Newcastle. 
For the first time in many years, the Foxes don't look like the strongest competitor to the Big Six. Their defense is lacking stability with 21 goals conceded, 4th most, 190 shots in the box conceded, 3rd most, and 62 shots on target conceded, 2nd most, and only one clean sheet so far. Their attack is also struggling to create chances, 92 chances created, 3rd fewest, and take shots, 4th fewest number of shots and shots in box. In their 3 latest games, they backed just 1 and conceded 6. At this time, I would not buy any player from Leicester, except maybe Vardy, until they start performing as they used to. Their top performers so far are Vardy, he's the team's main man, 7 goals and 1 assist so far, and their penalty taker. He has the most touches in the opposition's box 57, and he's involved in the most big chances 8. Barnes, he's good at getting in the box, 43 touches in the box, and is not afraid of shooting 21 shots and 16 shots in the box. However, he only played 159 minutes in his last 3 games. Top 3 Differentials The Portuguese magician of the citizens is currently their top goal scorer with 4 strikes, on top of 2 assists. Most of these returns were achieved only recently, as he has either scored or assisted in 80% of his last 5 outings, highlighting a more important role in the final third, especially having made a part of 4 big chances. So far he is overperforming his expected goal ratio and underperforming his expected assist ratio, creating some kind of balance, which is exactly what you should expect from him in the next set of fixtures, which includes West Ham, Aston Villa and Watford with the potential for a goals galore. Wilfried Zaha Although he has the same number of goals as teammate Conor Gallagher and Christian Benteke, in the Ivorian winger an all-round performance is more possible as reflected by his record of 4 goals and an assist until this stage. The interesting aspect about his game, this campaign, is that he tends to get more involved in the penalty area, a fact that is mirrored by 65% of his shots being fired from inside the box. Coming against Aston Villa this game week, they have conceded an average of more than 2 goals per game along the last 5 ties, and they should be leaking in a few more goals against the Eagles of Crystal Palace who are performing well in attacking terms lately. Raul Jimenez we're happy to have him back, the Mexican force of Wolves is progressively returning to his usual form following the horrific head injury he has endured. With 3 goals and as many assists, all coming starting from the 6th game week, he will have 2 appealing fixtures to boost his tally, with a visit to face the ever leaking Norwich this game week, followed by the reception of Burnley. He remains one of the most dangerous forwards inside the area, firing in 21 out of 25 shots from inside the box, including the penalty kick duties he is assuming at the moment. Now let's talk about team's form. Attack Chelsea are top of each single attacking aspect across the last 4 game weeks, most goals scored, most XG, most shots on target and most big chances created. Watford appear in best attacking team's chart over the last 4 game weeks for the first time this season, third only to Chelsea and Liverpool for most goals scored 9 and most big chances created 11. Burnley have put in some unexpected solid attacking displays across the last 4 game weeks, joint third most goals scored, the arrival of Maxwell Cornet added a much needed attacking depth for the Clarets, the Ivorian has now scored 5 goals in just 6 starts. Brighton's solid start to the season seems to be coming to an end, as the Seagulls are ranked 18th for both goals scored and big chances created across the last 4 game weeks, avoid their assets for now. Everton's awful attacking form continues in the log absence of talisman Dominic Calvert-Lewin, the Toffees are ranked bottom for shots on target and 18th for goals scored and big chances created over the last 4 game weeks, so totally avoid. Team's form, defense. Crystal Palace are now a different team under Patrick Vieira, a balanced style of play with solid defense. The Eagles have now conceded the fewest big chances in the league across the last 4 game weeks, while their 4 goals conceded are only bettered by Chelsea and Man City. Southampton have identical stats to Palace over the last 4 game weeks, though a tough trip to Anfield would mean it is another night on the bench for Tino Livramento. The absence of David Raya has damaged the brand for defense, having conceded 2nd most goals 10, and 2nd most shots on target conceded 24, and 3rd most big chances conceded across the last 4 game weeks. I wouldn't get any of their defenders for now. Not only does Everton's attack suffer, but also their defense were conceded second most goals, second most XG, and most big chances conceded over the last 4 game weeks. It may be a good time to target attackers playing against this exposed Toffees defense. To the next segment, players comparison. Puki vs Sam Maxime. Norwich and Newcastle have the two worst attacks in the league in the past 4 game weeks, still both strikers scored in game week 12 and should be popular in coming weeks especially with favorable run of fixtures and new manager bounce. If I must choose, I'd bet on Sam Maxime, 
Last week he took impressive 7 shots and created 2 chances. Most of us seem to be forgetting that he is 3rd best scoring forward in the game so far and he's simply fun to watch. In my opinion, Timu's only advantage is penalty duty but it's not enough to beat Alexander Samaxim. King vs Dennis after last week haul, Watford forwards surely will be popular before game week 13, but remember after Leicester, they play against Chelsea and Man City next, where it'll be hard to score. Dennis scored more points in the last 5 game weeks, but King's underlying stats are far better. He scored more goals, 4 against 2, takes more shots, 17 against 7, has more big chances, 7 to 1, and with 3.84 xG, he is the best striker in the league during this period, and he only played 4 games. Dennis plays more winger role and has bigger assist potential, but after Sar's last penalty miss, there's a great chance that King takes upcoming ones. In my opinion, there's no debate, Joshua is a far better option. Silva vs Jota Both Man City and Liverpool are the best attacking teams in the league, maybe Jota plays as a striker, but Silva's underlying numbers are surprisingly better. Both have 3 big chances, but Silva takes more shots, 8-2. He has more touches in the opponent's box, 36 versus 14, and with an XG of 2.77, he was the second midfielder in the game after Salah from game week 8 to game week 12. In addition, with 8 chances created and expected assists of 1.32, he was fourth among midfielders. Bernardo Silva is similar to Foden, expect his rotation proof as he only missed game week 1. On the other hand, Jota's minutes might be in danger as Firmino will be fit sooner than we think and with favorable Man City fixtures, Silva will be the obvious choice for coming weeks. To the last segment of our preview, Captain Picks. Mo Salah, our regular pick. He amassed an enormous 125 FPL points thanks to his 11 goals, 8 assists and 7 clean sheets, that's 46 more points than his nearest FPL rival in any position. In 8 league matches against Southampton, Salah has scored 7 goals and has 2 assists. Salah played the full 90 minutes in every league game this season, that certainty and consistency make him the safest captaincy option. However, beware that Southampton have outperformed expectations this season and they have looked defensively solid in a number of their matches, 5 clean sheets up to date. Our second pick is Aubameyang, he faces a Newcastle side that hasn't managed to keep a single clean sheet this season and conceded 27 goals in their 12 league games this season, that ranks them as the joint worst defense in the league alongside Norwich. In 7 league matches against Newcastle, Oba has managed 5 goals and 3 assists. His cons are he blanked in his last 3 matches and failed to deliver a double digit hold this season. Our alternative third choice this game week is Joao Cancelo. The Man City defender has been playing more like an attacking midfielder and is FPL's second highest point scorer in any position with 67 points. His 2 assists in game week 11 were added to another assist in game week 12 and with bonus points added he achieved his fourth double digit hold of the season. Cancelo is a great FPL option right now and would be a great differential pick in game week 13. We have come to the end of our preview for game week 13. Thank you all for watching. Check out our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't yet. Good luck this weekend and peace.